Hello, my name is Aline Matos and I am a neurologist. Currently, I work in Brazil, South America, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit about uh, chikungunya encephalitis. Well, encephalitis is the clinical result of a brain inflammation, which can be caused by autoimmune disorders or by infections. Uh, by infections, we mean uh, disease caused by bacteria, fungi, parasites, and viruses. Chikungunya encephalitis is caused by chikungunya virus, which is an arbovirus. This word is an abbreviation for arthropod-borne virus, which means uh, a virus that infects an arthropod, which could be a mosquito, a fly, or a tick, and then the arthropod bites the human being, and then we humans get infected. Uh, the vector for chikungunya, the arthropod that uh, is able to transmit chikungunya, is a mosquito from the genera Aedes. And depending on where you live, it could be Aedes aeropictus or Aedes aegypti. We were not aware of the existence of chikungunya viruses until 1952-1953 when an outbreak occurred in Tanzania. By that time, we considered this virus as a benign virus because it would cause only fever, arthralgia, myalgia. And it remained like that for a long period. But in 2005, we had the first report of neurological diseases caused by chikungunya. It happened in La Reunion Island where about a third of the local population got infected and 200 people approximately uh, had encephalitis, most elderly and neonates. In the following year, 2006, the same thing happened in India, which much more people affected. By 2013, uh, the, th the same thing happened in the Caribbean. And by 2015, 15, we had the same thing going on in Brazil. In Caribbean and in Brazil, what was interesting is that uh, those regions were already endemic for dengue virus and then uh, Zika virus get to the region and then we have chikungunya. So uh, for those regions we have a triple epidemics going on. Well, uh, no every patient that gets infected by chikungunya virus will develop chikungunya encephalitis but all the patients that do develop chikungunya encephalitis will have previous infectious symptoms. So everything is taught by uh, the patient having fever and having arthralgia and myalgia. And then in about five to seven days, he can get confusion and uh, worsening of the headaches, seizures and drowsiness. This is, these are the basic symptoms. In order to diagnose chikungunya encephalitis, we have to perform two uh, exams. The first one would be uh, a lumbar puncture, where we can get samples of the patient's cerebrospinal fluid. And we can also uh, perform, uh, we can also collect serum samples from the patient. So we get both sample, samples, CSF samples and serum samples. And then we took those samples to the lab and we perform additional two kinds of tests. The first one is an immunology test where we search for antibodies against chikungunya in patient samples, cerebrospinal fluid sample and serum sample. Uh, later, we uh, use uh, biomolecular tests uh, to try to find out if there is uh, RNA material that resembles the, vir the virus inside the patient samples. Currently, there is no uh, specific treatment for chikungunya encephalitis. All we can offer is medical support, so IV fluids, uh, medication against fever and against headaches. But uh, some patients do get a more severe condition and sometimes they develop uh, difficulties in breathing and sometimes acute renal failure associated. So uh, some patients do need uh, uh, to be in ICU facilities 
and do need mechanical ventilation. So part of the patients uh, evolves really well and they can get uh, cured, but uh, part of the patients do have sequelae, uh, just like uh, subcortical dementia. So they have uh, slowliness of mental processing, sometimes have depressive uh, symptoms, de symptoms of depression, uh, and unfortunately, part of the patients actually dies. In order to, to fight this problem, we are currently in Brazil uh, developing uh, research about it. So we have clinical and laboratory research. Uh, we try to understand the risk factors that would make someone go from uh, a common chikungunya infection to chikungunya encephalitis. Uh, we also are trying to understand how the virus uh, works inside the central nervous system and uh, things like that.